When a player is cleared to practice, it activates a 21-day window during which the player must be activated to the 53-man roster or placed on season-ending injured reserve at the conclusion of the three-week period. So that's what's happening here with this window opening, Billy? They could also be released or traded. Ooh, things are getting juicy now. Well, well he, he, can't be, he can't be traded, the deadline. Aaron Rodgers to the Patriots. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. A 21-day practice window has opened? It's open, Dan. Put it on the poll, please, Juju. Did you know there was such a thing as a 21-day practice window? 21-21. Have you seen the report that Aaron it used to be tied to the playoffs? And I know he went on McAfee and he kind of acknowledged that it is tied to the playoff chances, which is a little change of pace from what they were reporting, what Jake Glazer had reported on Fox, which is, no, Aaron wants to do this to prove people wrong. It doesn't matter if they're mathematically eliminated, which kind of just feels dangerous. Why not just make sure he's fully uh, healed up because the speed – bridge operation they showed graphics of it it doesn't i mean it, it we've never seen someone come back this way uh, in this kind of fashion so i do think skepticism here is safe though he laments it openly ha- has he talked about what he's going to do next year like is he going to play again somewhere or is there he gonna... there he's got he's got a two-year contract no, there is he going to play that's not the, that's not the question i asked not the, well the, the way time. that he's been talking recently makes it seem as he's got a refreshed view on things and he misses it greatly now that he's gone and that he's obviously reinvigorated it's an it's not an unreasonable question for you to ask did he take a shot at you yesterday yeah. that's where a lot of people are going with this yeah, everybody's taking shots at my dog leave my dog alone yeah. now or else Whoa. Or, or else. else. Uh, know, or or else. Uh, you, you dropped an or else there. I especially, thank you, Juju, for doing that. I am uh, especially broken here today because uh, at the end of uh, hour two here, I've been lamenting about Greg Cody's stamina hour two, and <laughs> I've just realized today this realization came that the days that I wear the costumes – Make me super tired late in the show where I fall apart. Well, it's all that kinky sex you're having with your wife in it. Hey! Here's a video courtesy of the Pat McAfee show. Was Aaron Rodgers talking about Dan? There's still people that don't think you tore your Achilles. Will we ever get a photo of the Achilles being just ripped? <laughs> Listen, we're on YouTube now, so let me just say it to anybody out there that didn't think I tore my Achilles. GFY. Oh. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, what is Whoa. that? <laughs> First word is go, and the last word is yourself. Finger oh. in the middle. Middle, the middle is probably what you're not doing, living in your parents' basement. Oh, I think there might be worse. <laughs> okay, that was what happened with COVID. Yes, oh, got yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't be a all right. Aaron well, GF Watt, all of them. That's what I say. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Go finger yourself everywhere. Amen. <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> do what you need to do. That's right. But just keep your stupid, ill-informed opinions. Out of our universe, please. Ain't that right, Aaron? Yeah. Ah. Do your own research. Oh, no. Nice. Right. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Appreciate it, everybody. Yeah. Do your own research sounds like more of a like a confirmation of your stance. Now, now Aaron Rodgers knows that we don't have basements here in South Florida. Yeah. He doesn't know that I've been having sex with my wife in costumes, though. That's that's something that he would have only learned yeah. if he was listening to this program right yeah. now. Yeah, you're cool. You the sex. look on Charlotte's face right now. Well, I did. Well, yeah. There's a lot of things that are. There's canon. a lot going on. But <laughs> yeah. um, when he says G F Y, wait, is that what it was? Yes, that's. <laughs> yeah. Well when he says that, and then looks at the camera as though it's the meanest thing anybody's ever said. He's like G F Y, like a little kid ass. learning to swear but not swearing, yeah. and then. Uh, he drives me crazy. The, he drives my, me absolutely insane. Then my man says, what does that mean? <laughs> but he's going to come back before anyone expected him to come back. That well, seems... that Maybe th- not. Because he found out the 21-day practice window. He doesn't actually need to come back. I had hey. someone tweet at me, and I don't know why I've become the center of this conspiracy. I had someone I tweet at me <laughs> that they think that what's happening here is that like he wanted the Jets to lose and not make the playoffs and then have the Jets be the ones to come in and stop and be like, no, just come back next year, right? So then he can kind of play the position of, 
well, I was going to, and I did beat it before anyone else could, and I was going to do it, but they didn't let me. So I'm just going to come back in a year instead. Billy, this is exactly the theory I've had about him for years now. He doesn't want to have a good team. He doesn't want to be in a position to win. What he wants is for people to say, oh, poor Aaron Rodgers, look, he does so much with so little. He's always angling for that. And this, this theory that you just said, Billy, works perfectly. Not my that. theory. Someone but I like it. I like it. That's Man is going to get blamed for all of this y'all saying. Of and I don't like it. Billy was the person who said that. Oh. So, Aaron Rodgers, I got something for you. Why? G-F-Y. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Why G-F-Y? I shoot you Gotti, everybody. Yeah. Dan Levitard. Why G-F-Y to Aaron Rodgers? <laughs> or else and a Y G-F-Y. Is there anything better than an or else when you tell someone to do something? You say, hey, you better get your ass up out of here. Or else. And you don't even have to finish it. You don't have to say what happens or else. No. I mean, because then the other person goes, or else what? And then you go, Ugh. No. <laughs> and then the argument's over. No, it no, works you, every time. No, Just, only certain people can pull off the or else. I cannot. No? I also cannot. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people are trying to pull off the or else anymore. I think of that as something from Westerns. I don't think of that as a modern phrase. Are you calling or else 20 CB? I'm asking at Lebetard show, are people still using or else as a threat at Lebetard show? We're going to we're going to throw this out to Tony in a second. He's somewhere in Miami uh, with a top five football observations. But before we do that, uh, I just asked Amin and got the answer I was expecting. I asked him, hey, were you on the set of The Jump and on ESPN all the time thinking about playing video games back in your cubicle? And he's like, oh, absolutely. I was full-blown addicted. Not video games, that video game, Red Dead Redemption. Absolutely. absolutely. I would be staring at the clock, kind of the way I'm staring at it right now, waiting for it to tick down to like 1 p.m. Pacific time. And I'd be like, all right, guys, good show you done. And I'd take off my mic and my earpiece and then rush into my cubicle. I wouldn't even take off my suit jacket sometimes. I just sit there for hours, still wearing my suit. There is like a very specific thing that where you get really, really, really addicted to a game and like it's all you can see and you close your eyes and you're playing the game even though you're not really playing the game that like unless you've you've been there and experienced it, you you don't know what it's like. You just have to play the game. And that happened with me with the mobile Monopoly game like two and a half years ago. Mm. And I could not stop playing Monopoly on my phone. Every waking minute, I just wanted to play Monopoly. I would be sitting in my chair at the Clevelander playing Monopoly while you guys were talking to me. And I just couldn't stop doing it. And I, I well, didn't even win that much. It was just addicting. So you seem to have, based on the history on this show and what you've told us, like a Monopoly adjacent addiction right because like you had monopoly go you had the mm -hmm. monopoly mobile game i don't think you'd be able to sit down for full-blown monopoly oh. i played it recently actually, really for five hours for, yeah oh. Did you win? Ooh, no one won no one ever wins no oh, one ever wins. Who, it goes on forever what you've never played monopoly with me then oh there's a winner all right gauntlet lay down yes we should do a monopoly deal off no yes we should. no i play full-blown monopoly and no other version mm. i need really Paper. Honestly, the other versions I, are better. No, they're not. Yes, Monopoly no, deal is Monopoly better. Monopoly is, it is a the game, greatest game ever made. It's a game of attrition. It's a game of wearing down your opponent. Make it, I've played Monopoly where my sister, with my, with my family, and my sister literally either could have accepted a very generous offer from me, which was, hey, I'll let you, you know, skate on this rent that you owe me, but I get free rent anytime I land on any of your properties from here on out. And she looked at me, she said, I would rather lose this game and let it just declare bankruptcy right there. That's the greatest feeling in Monopoly, ladies and gentlemen. Not, oh, we got it done in 15 minutes. No, 15 minutes? I don't want to play no quick-ass Monopoly. I you can make play more round. Monopoly. You don't understand. It's no. not like it's less dramatic because the games are sh uh, like four and a half hours shorter, I mean. It, no, 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 no. No, you don't understand the tension of Monopoly deal. You've never played it, you don't understand, you just don't get it. I mean, wants to slowly break a person. Yes, thank I mean, you. Yeah. You can do that in Monopoly deal. It's just as satisfying. And then you gang up on them and you beat them seven times in a row. 
Oh, no, no, no. It's it's no, the only one that thinks fingering yourself in that context felt more graphic. The the thing about Monopoly is you get things like you know how you have to go around the board once before you can start buying things, mm -hmm. and you get people who get all the way up to that last like chance or community chest, and then it's like go to jail, go directly to jail, and they're like, no, and I'm like, yes. Oh, I hate I, going to jail. Oh, I love do going not to pass jail. Go. Do not I love collect two hundred dollars. I'll reach a point. No. Oh, come on. No. Guys, this was our best segment in like a year. Yeah. We weren't done. There's so much meat left on this bone. We weren't done. Oh, I, wanted, I wanted to know if the person at ESPN who has to bleep McAfee has to bleep, has to think to themselves, do I have to bleep finger? finger. Yes. Go well, finger yourself. That's a good one. I would have bleeped it. Yeah. <laughs> Probably shouldn't be allowed to But they were that. on YouTube there, which is why. <laughs> we're on YouTube, right? Went off the rails. We should say that every time we start a segment. Tony, where are you right now? Dan, I'm right here in the cut right next to the AAA. I've been uh, not Is accosted, it? but I've been told by security guards that I can't stand on this buoy thing that holds up these giant yachts. Yeah, I was standing over because I was looking at a manatee that's in the water right now, and uh, they told me I couldn't do it. So Go I'm on the, the boat behind now. you. Show not us the manatee. Person. That would be good if we had Manatee's a mobile underneath. camera to look at a manatee. That would be uh, your co-host being a manatee. You would uh, usurp Mina Kimes' yeah. football segment with merely a dog. Guys, two-minute warning, and we have to hit this hard, hit this hard out. So please, go All right. on the yacht, Tony. All go right. on the yacht. You got two he's minutes. Under there, though. He's you under got... there. I'll, I'll see if I can find him. You two got... minutes starting All right, now. Number five. We'll start at number five. All right. Let me do my thing. C.J. Stroud has entered the must-watch QB category for myself. He's an excellent quarterback, and he's entered the must-watch QB category. For yourself. For yourself. Number five. For Number me. four. For Number four, keep an eye on what's happening in Denver. Mm. Keep an eye on them. It's hottest, hottest team in the league right now. What's happening is they're getting the ball at the opposing 46 a lot. A lot of turnovers. And what's happening is they're five wins in a row, and they're the hottest team in the NFL. Except for happening. the Eagles. Uh, Billy also has uh, that on Monday on God Bless Football. So this is Wednesday. Uh, number three. 80 I seconds. Had it Sunday. I had it Sunday. That's fine. <laughs> 80 seconds. Ah, uh, that's that's the Jared Goff we know and love. <laughs> that is. Yes, it really that's was. That's him. That is him. There he is. A little Thanksgiving observation. No, Number two. A little, you know, it's a long weekend, Dano. Number two, <laughs> a master class of coaching by Bill, by Bill Belichick this year. I'm sorry, they're taking pictures of me. I don't think I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> Max Jones and Bailey Zapier disaster. He loses to the passing Paisan. Two and nine slated to have the third overall pick. And a shot of Caleb Williams, Drake May, or Maserati Marv. You know what that's called, Dano? Bishop to Rook 9. <laughs> <laughs> number Belichick one. still got it. Number one. Number one, there's bringing more security guards. Tell the DFY. <laughs> you, 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 can, walk. you can do a walk and talk. <laughs> you can go. You can, you can uh, do a walk and talk. Walk, walk, wander, walk, walk away from security. You don't want to be messing with security in Miami near a dock. That's a lot of rich people. You got to you, you <laughs> yeah, just give us number one. 30 seconds or less. Number one. Kalawasa Kalawasa Award of the Week goes to none other than Josh Dobbs, the pastronaut. More like the astronaut. Oh, oh no. 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 Yeah, more like the astronaut. <laughs> Damn. Kalawasa. Get it, Dan? In Spanish. Yeah, why? <laughs> There are many uh, confidence crushers that come with age, I mean, and one of the things that I hesitate around is I feel super ridiculous saying the name of the rapper Twista hmm. at my age. Hmm. Just doesn't feel right to have to avoid the ER and hit the Twista how often does Twista come up in conversation with you, Dan? Yeah. I'm just saying generally some of the names of the rappers when I'm talking about pop culture things, I get uh, I get just, I feel ridiculous. I, it, it doesn't feel uh, like it, it's age appropriate for me to be I talking mean, about Twista. Over here. Yeah. <laughs> I understand, so I have to accentuate the A a little extra, and I have to say Twista. But the reason I'm bringing all of this up is because I'm surprised that a rapper hadn't thought of this before now, which is Twista is doing his rapping while accompanied by machine gun fire, by someone nearby who has just got an assortment of guns in an America that has way too many of those. But if you're going to use it to make a little music, I'm kind of surprised, I mean, that this hasn't been done before, uh, that this video is something that's novel. I would have thought somebody would have done this because this sounds pretty good.
Gunman, Jessica, I just saw her mouth. What the f Just saw it. Uh, Jessica didn't have any use for that music. I'm going to grab the steering wheel and veer it in a different direction. Those guns remind me of a new addiction. That was an old addiction. You ever you ever have an addiction and you kick it and you're clean and you're like, I, I can can be around this no problem. Porno. <laughs> you know when you see it. I thought I was clear and clean and living good off of Red Dead Redemption. And then I was oh, I thought you were gonna say Kanye. Phew. Oh man, I was having a conversation with my kid about like, oh, there's this game, and my kid's like, oh yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'll show you. Like I go hunting in it. Fast forward Thanksgiving, the entire th I mean, every day, eight hours a day of just mindless Red Dead Redemption playing. I love that game eight so Eight hours much. a day? Yes. Wait, you or your kid? Me. Oh, my kid just wow. sat there and watched. As I try to get legendary moves. It is fun to watch. Oh, my God. I could watch it for eight and, hours. And so the, the worst part is, Jessica, I wish it was just hunting. But the problem is there's several bounties on my head from the last time I played. So I get these bounty hunters that always come up. And so I'm like, all right, well, hold on. We got we to gotta pause the fishing for a second. Daddy's got to pull out his rifle. And now I'm like, I've got the, the sniper scope. And I'm picking off these bounty hunters from, like, miles away. They're on the top of the ridge, and they're, like, tracking. They're looking around. And I'm like, oh, I got your ass now. One guy, I shot him so hard, his hat flew in the air. And my kids started laughing. This doesn't sound like great parenting. Oh, it's, I, that's what I'm saying. It's like, this is terrible. No, it's this, a soothing game. It, it, you can just gallop. Yeah, you oh. just ride a horse around. They like the it's gallop. It's like that uh, tractor simulator. I need to explain to the audience the sheer horror that just swept over the face of... I mean, partner, Charlotte, Charlotte her eyebrows shot into the sky, uh, just horrified Kinda by you like playing you video no, games. No, shot the no, guy. no, not, not horrified. I I'm think what was going through my head was I have no idea how to play. I would have no, I don't understand. I have never experienced Red Dead Redemption. Oh, it's amazing. If you've ever wanted to be a cowboy, like this is the game for it. The, my favorite thing is when you get like a perfect headshot, sometimes you get this little cinematic where they replay it in slow motion and they show the bullet going through the guy's face. <laughs> and so the first time I did that, my kid is like, whoa! I'm like, yeah, it's cool, like, ain't again, it? Again, not great parenting. Did it, it probably felt pretty good, though, to be, like, impressing your kid with, yeah. right? It felt amazing. And, and that's the problem. If it felt bad, I would have stopped. But if ever, all those feelings came. I, I don't think you know this, Dan. When I worked at ESPN uh, in L.A., I had Michelle Beadle's old cubicle when she went to go do Get Up. So I set up, I had a monitor, and I had to place my PS4 in there. So I would go in the morning, and I'd do my morning stuff, and then I'd do the show, I'd do Sports Nation, and when I was done, I'd go to the cubicle. So this is about like 1.30, 2 o'clock, and from that time until like literally like it was nighttime. And people had left, and, and like the nighttime. So you're proper addicted. You're talking about something oh. that calls you right back in. You feel a little gross doing it afterward, but you feel good doing it. But you thought you had quit. You thought you had gone cold turkey. Then I don't feel gross afterward. I feel like, oh man, I have to get up now. I'm like, no, you don't. You can keep playing. Do you do you feel? Are you in withdrawal right now, or did you somehow bring it with you? Oh no, I didn't bring it. I should have. Well, that, that's just a lot to yeah, pack, sure. and I don't want to have to go through TSA with a huge PlayStation. I always look down on people like that. So watching Twisted do that made you want to play Red De Redemption again. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the you watch that video, and it's a I guess a cool idea. The the, the gun sinks with the beat. I'm sure it's been done before. Well, yeah, by Tupac and Bone Thugs as an original. <laughs> oh, what a uh, banger! Yeah, it was a banger. banger. Yeah. Bone Thugs, my number one on Unwrapped. So happy, really? crazy, bones. yeah, yeah. I went through it like such a huge phase this year. This year, yeah, they were just so far ahead of their time. Thoughts and prayers to Crazy Bone. We're, we're thinking of you, Dan. How do you how do you feel about the <laughs> Spotify Unwrapped? But but what I wanted to talk about real quick, I was getting somewhere okay. <laughs> prior to the Red Dead diatribe. Oh. <laughs> was is it that Twista? was that Twista is actually that's a bit of marketing for Twista uh. because he is a certified gun instructor. And you can, you can you can take exercising a Second Amendment. I like that. <laughs> you can take classes here, as we found. He's a gun coach, and you can get concealed weapons classes delivered to you from Twista. Are you familiar? You're obviously familiar with overnight celebrity and what is perceived to be his day job. He's got this side hustle. Do you know what his other side hustle is? Nope. He's a ventriloquist. 
Really? Yeah, I've seen. Wait, wait, wait. I've seen these videos. That wait, is wait. good. That's. I'm interested in that. Tell me more about that. Does he have like set little puppets that he? Well, yeah. hold on a second. He, he we does. have we have uh, Tiny Twist and Twista together here, uh, and I can't wait to see how good he is as a ventriloquist. Uh-huh. Okay, all right. Well, let's see what you can do then. I know the beat. The beat go like this. It ain't alive. What, you talking about the bass line or something? Yeah. Well, how does the bass line go? We can do it together. Yeah. There's right, no way go. you can, Twissa. No. <laughs> okay, I got you. You did. Ah. Uh, uh. What can't he do? <laughs> Who was the song with then? Hilarious, hilarious. I was fairly uh, ready to pounce on him. That's not a ventriloquist. No? Not good enough as a ventriloquist. He not? needs to be better. He does not have range. I suddenly yes, became does. both a Twista uh, expert and a ventriloquist expert. But then he unleashed that uh, that ending, and I had no answers. He silenced me. Tony was awed. How did he do that? Tony? <laughs> How indeed. I, I want to see indeed. the puppet shoot a gun. Then I'll be impressed. <laughs> While the puppet's rapping overnight celebrity. I mean, yes. just showed you what a terrible ventriloquist he would be. Oh. <laughs> it does make you want to try that. Oh. It does make you want to what? try that. Doesn't does it? Does it make you want to try it that? Makes kinda, me wanna try kinda. It. I, I think I'm good at it. <laughs> I think I'm good at it. I don't know about you guys. They're like a jazz hand and sneakers. <laughs> okay, Mike is actually Second pretty good. A jazz hand. <laughs> Just, um. All right. You know what? I <laughs> want to try something. Like a uh. Antiquado. I, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. You've gone too far. I'd like to try something, actually. What's that? Can I get Amin Al Hassan's uh-huh. expert commentary yeah. on the sale of the Mavericks to Mark Cuban, but only <laughs> talking to Amin Al Hassan as a ventriloquist? You're going to have to oh, hold, hold your on. hand up as a puppet. Yeah, no, I got it right here. Hold on. Do you yeah, want me to get you? Have you have a puppet? You have a puppet? What yeah. do you want? What do you need to get me? You uh, have a puppet? Yeah, he has a puppet. Come on. Okay, he's got a, a snake right. of some sort. Tiny no, mean? he's got the run. Oh, nope. Oh, he's got a fish. I thought he was going to go a with trout. the Ron McGill. Wait, I think I've got a better thing than that. Let's see what we've got here. We'll give, uh, but we, we're going to cede the floor to you to give no, you. you did? I did. I did. That's a, it's a really hilarious. Because Okay, you. that doesn't really no, work. You I'm know, gonna, we've. This is going well. We've been weaponized by the right, and I don't want to give them this ammunition. What's that? This is just bad stuff. Is it? Hold on. Give Dan a shot here. He's got a snake puppet. I'm I'm scared of snakes. The degree of difficulty on what you're doing in going to squeaky voice and a fish as opposed to- Wait, he's got another puppet. Okay, he's got a shark now. He doesn't need my- Well, he's a shark. All right, talk about Mark Cuban. Oh, uh, this guy. You kidding me? Eh? I can't do. Oh, I can't say his name because his name. It has a B in it. Yeah, and it and it N. Not an N. And N <laughs> the letter that comes right after that. You know? Okay, uh, I'm going to bail Let's on, bail on, on this no. as a concept. There are no bad spitballs. It seemed like a good idea at the time. I know That's what the production meetings for. Um, <laughs> okay. But I know that he's got good thoughts on Mark Cuban. Looks like a penis. It looks like a what? You should see a doctor. Uh, 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 a poorly, <laughs> I wish I could say peas, a poorly circumcised one at that. <laughs> Can you give me, though, because I do want your good analysis yes. on something. Uh-huh. Please stop talking like that. Like I've, what? I've given, up on, I've given up on the idea of you talking without your lips moving. Okay. I'm sweating in embarrassment on your back. Well, what were you going to do with the snake? <laughs> um, I, well, I was going to give him the snake to replace the fish because I thought he was going too much squeaky voice and I was going to make it easier because he made the degree of difficulty <laughs> too hard. It was hard enough as it was. Now he had to do it as the voice of the character. Here's Twista.
coaching carousel keeps spinning. And one of the uh, news items that made a lot of people chuckle and curious was that Bobby Petrino, who was at Texas A&M and no longer a part of Jimbo Fisher's staff because there is no Jimbo Fisher staff, has found his way back to Arkansas, a place where he used to be the head coach. And now he's going to be the offensive coordinator for Arkansas. And I, I love the, uh, the way that it was reported. Arkansas is now vetting Bobby Petrino as a potential offensive coordinator. What exactly does Arkansas need to vet? Did something happen when he was there before that I wasn't aware? Vetting. Is this Metal Arc doing the vetting? <laughs> because historically, I'm not very good at that how, either. How can, how can that happen? <laughs> like, it happened on their watch. The motorcycle accident happened on their watch. The person riding behind them on the motorcycle happened on their watch. They, who did, How do they need to vet that? Google? Uh, there's no button left over there? And I have I have done some reporting that if, boy, does Bobby Petrino and that offense, that is, runs in direct opposition to the team that Sam Pittman was recruiting and the style he had been playing. And that's not necessarily going to work out because when you have years of recruiting and sacking classes for a certain style to all of a sudden change it, like K.J. Jefferson, who I rate and is a, a, a brilliant athletic talent. I didn't understand why the they portal. were – I didn't understand well, why a, they he's were – actually refuting that. He posts in an what? IG story. Oh. Yeah, he says he has refuting not made reports. his – I'm all over the Arkansas Razorback beat. <laughs> why <laughs> is that? Yeah, it's weird. And it's the weirdest fan base I've ever encountered, but they care deeply about their team. Why are they so bad at offense, though? Well, why? their former offensive coordinator was let Dan, go after Dan he Enos. was emailing back fans that were mad about mm. the way that their offense was performing. They, they backslid, and I actually – Low key, think Arkansas is a great job. Money bag boosters, and they operate in a state, and we're already seeing it with their basketball team because they did damage in the portal, where the institution can essentially pay NIL directly. Missouri, if you're wondering how they became a top 10 team, it could be very well because they have a good staff and a good program there, but they are also aided by they essentially have a base salary. They can go and offer in state kids. Missouri, Arkansas, Good jobs, and we now know that with Missouri, Arkansas is going to be a good job. However, this is not Sam Pittman's call. This was forced on him by the administration. That's a little report there for you. But I cannot believe – I understand how Petrino and his offense, which gets results, ends up at other places. This is awkward. He used to be the head coach there. Now, Vance Joseph is killing it as defensive coordinator for the Denver Broncos. Like There is precedent for this kind of stuff. But you're vetting him. He did something as a lead administrator of your athletic program that you don't often come back from. One of the most famous coaching photographs ever taken is him at a press conference with a neck brace, his face bleeding, trying to explain why it is that he crashed a motorcycle uh, uh, with a young woman who was not his wife but worked in the athletic department, I believe. Yeah, she was a former volleyball player who he hired to his staff. And then he – I I might get the details wrong, but he was lying about the nature of the accident. And then when the police report about the accident came out, that was how people found out that he wasn't alone when he crashed the motorcycle. Right. And so, you know, obviously it was a scandal because it was an affair with a employee, but – um, but it's most memorable for the photo. It also, he, yeah, he went to this press conference with a neck brace on with his face all bloody, and we, we all have seen the, the photo and before. And the All-State Sugar Bowl had to remind everybody that's assembled of his accomplishment. <laughs> and we? he's just gotten a lot of a lot of second, third, and fourth chances since then. And this is despite not just, like, the Arkansas uh, debacle, but also, like, everything else he's done in his career, whether it was, like, Louisville or the Falcons or the way that he's left other jobs. Like, he has just gotten a, a lot of chances chances to to coach places there is only one time in my life I have felt what Bobby Petrino must have felt or a feeling of it as he had to walk to the microphone and give the press conference in that condition yeah. and it was, I was a young person in the Bahamas and I wrecked a uh, scooter I had uh, I'd rented and I was going to lose my deposit and I wanted to conceal that I had uh, blood on me and conceal. I didn't wreck it badly, but I damaged it. 
And so I wore a long sleeve shirt and I was clearly bleeding through the elbows of the, <laughs> of the shirt, which I didn't know until it was pointed out to me from the person who said, no, we're going to keep your deposit. You clearly wrecked this. And I'm like, what are you talking about? But that wasn't walking into a press conference where I had to explain something like this to the public, to my fan base, to, to my wife, where I'm covered in blood. And again, I'm wearing a neck brace. But Mike, you mentioned the ability for these guys to to rehab themselves what are the latest groomers that's fascinating there's a whole bunch of fascinating things in this college football cycle for one jeff levy getting a head coaching job where i guess art briles the, are we forgetting about that and and, and how jeff Another levy is, is associated with that <laughs> but yeah john gruden has creeped back in mm. to the rumors and i I wish we could go back a couple of years ago because I'm like, it's only a matter of time John Gruden pops back up. Whether it be a radio broadcasting gig, just to test the waters and get you used to seeing John Gruden back out there. John Gruden is one of the rumored names in the mix for this Indiana job. I think that also has been refuted since. Like I, I saw after I think Bruce Feldman tweeted that he was being considered, and other reporters like that's just not true. But well, Bruce Feldman is. As close to the gold standard I, in this, I feel like this is one of those times where you throw out that trial balloon. Hey, if you know, we said Gruden. How do you guys feel about that? And then oh. the public, the public's like, Oh no, no, no! Oh yeah, no, that's that. That rumor's that, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah, no, they're testing the waters. That yeah. could be part of it. I mean, that is part of the whole coaching carousel thing for a lot of. Uh, People who want to throw their names into the or their agent will like throw their name into the ring and be like, look, this is a coveted hire. And then other people will see it and think, oh, this is someone who maybe we should look into hiring. That's like how the whole ecosystem works around <laughs> these different guys getting promoted and hired, di hired different places. Like only guys that are, I think, really close to the beat generally know who actually is be being interviewed or not. And like the rest, I, you just see names get thrown out that. Like years later, you're, you'll find out, oh, that person was never actually even considered for this. This was completely separate. This was maybe an agent trying to get them in the oh, conversation. Agents. Yeah, there's a lot of that, too. And a lot of hires actually get made because the AD and the head coach share share an agent. And there were people theorizing that was what was going on with the Mark Stoops thing. Did we ever get down to it? Because there were conflicting reports. Did he actually get in an airplane and land <laughs> In Texas, and then was told. Give you me know, five minutes, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. And then was told. Like, it's been reported because it's one of those things where this becomes the truth because we like it so much. The rumor is that Stoops, after that r rivalry, it is a tough word rivalry to say, week. yeah, went over Louisville. He essentially hopped on a bird and was on his way to become the new Texas A&M fighting Aggie head coach. And then the response to that. And I understand, as a survivor twice of a Mark Stoops head coaching rumor, I understand why it's not sexy enough for you. But then, <laughs> but then to be like, well, here's something sexy for you, Mike Elko. If he got to Texas A&M and they're like, oh, never mind, and he got himself to College Station, that's oh my God. that's it. And then rough. he fired off that tweet. You know, after That's much reflection. That's an all-time <laughs> sad tweet. Like, after, after much reflection, I could never leave what? Kentucky. I After seeing my team upset our in-state rival who had one loss this whole season, <laughs> biggest game of our season, I could never leave these guys. And it's like, like we all have eyes. I have a funny tidbit Jam. about <laughs> uh, Is it Bjork, the AD? Ross over Bjork. At, Yeah, Ross Bjork at the AD. Miami – in their search, the search firm did rate Ross Bjork as the uh, AD. And when I was Bjork. doing a report on the AD and head coaching search, Bjork, I mean, through the agent, you know, I just got to Texas A&M. It'd be awkward to leave. I'm, I'm very happy. And then reports came out, substantiated or unsubstantiated, that Miami was – this was a salary that they were looking to pay the AD. And guess who came kicking around the job again? Hey, I, I remember when I told you I wasn't interested. Are you actually paying this? Let me ask Amin this question. Because, about Bjork? Uh, not about, no. Uh, I just I, have a, a, the ADV and someone with a swan outfit on. <laughs> <laughs> like something, like that, something, oh, yeah. something not unlike what I am wearing right That's now. That's Britney Spears. Um, she's incredible live, by the way. It's odd, but she's great. Zach Taylor. Amazing pipes. I don't know if you guys have seen what the Bengals coach record is without Joe Burrow. It's 428 and 1. The Bengals were a laughing stock franchise. Zach Taylor gets there, and now, after many, many years of laughing stock, they've got Joe Burrow, and they're not that. 
I know that coaching and culture and these things are important. But when you start telling me that Gruden can be back in the game, I'm like, why, why are we doing that? Brian Billick, he had like the same career record as Brian Billick. He's always my example, too. He was a Super Bowl winner. No one, People just stopped calling Brian Billick. I actually do think we're not done with John Gruden. I think in a broadcast capacity, some – some radio syndicate is going to give him an opportunity and he will find his way back into the public eye. Look, Gruden's 117 to 112 as a, a in the regular season as a head coach, which is .511. He's above 500. Mm-hmm. I feel like the only way you don't get hired again as a coach is if you're really bad. I feel like you can do pretty much anything and people will be like, well, did he have a winning record? Um, uh, he did? Oh, okay. That's why Josh McDaniels will never coach again. Bobby Petrino gets the Arkansas. See, okay. I, I thought Josh McDaniels would never coach again the first time. <laughs> See, well, also he will. He'll be in Charlotte in like three years. But Mike's point, and this is not an irrelevant one, it's not a great job for a former NFL head coach to become a offensive coordinator. But for that school to bring him back, when the disgrace we're talking about has resulted in not one but two paid grid uh, grid of death punishments to shame him, for that school to come around and say, you know what, kind of miss what the offense looked like when Petrino was here. (laughs) Never mind that we have a bunch of plotting power guys. We're going to do this air raid Petrino thing. (laughs) I thought you were going to say you felt most like Petrino when you had the neck brace on. (laughs) 